If you've been watching Trackmania videos on YouTube, you're probably familiar with the speedrunning aspect of the game, where the goal is to set the fastest record on any track you play. But a side of Trackmania you may not be as familiar with is live competitions. Every single day in Trackmania, a tournament is hosted called Cup of the Day. The tournament gets several thousand players participating, and it's highly competitive and prestigious to win. The way Cup of the Day works is that everyone loads onto a brand new map that nobody's played before. You then have 15 minutes to learn a track and set the best qualifying time you can. The top 64 players in the qualifier move on to the first division, where they play a knockout match for the trophy. In the past, I've managed to win Cup of the Day once, but that time it felt like it happened completely by accident, and ever since then, I've played over 100 Cups of the Day, without managing to win again. I've really wanted to win a Cup of the Day where I truly feel like the best, most consistent player, without luck being a deciding factor. Recently on my livestream though, the day had finally come where it seemed like everything aligned, and this is the story of how I won a Trackmania tournament on purpose. The day was the 14th of September, and as we first loaded onto the map, I instantly recognized the track's creator, Shorty, who is known for making backwards driving maps. The name of the map was Back and Forth, so I instantly knew that backwards driving would be a theme. But for safe measure, I decided to watch the GPS run to see how the track was played. Plastic backwards built up speed like crazy, okay. Backwards to checkpoint one, plastic bounce. No brakes here. But he releases. Plastic bounce, oh, more backwards. Yo, I like this. The moving blocks can become a big problem. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, this is insane. I am so glad I watched the DPS. Hugging the wall for more speed here. Okay, noted. Okay, my brain is uh, aching a little bit from watching that. <laughs> After watching the demo run, there were a lot of things to unpack. But one thing I was sure of was that this map was weird enough that it would throw off most people. Trackmania has very defined track styles, such as tech, dirt, and full speed. You can think of them like genres of music, where one artist can be really good at jazz, but not so much at drum and bass. It's the same thing in Trackmania, where some players have spent years mastering one track style specifically. The good thing about this track is that it didn't fit into any one style, so no specialist would have any clear advantage. It was essentially anyone's game. Okay, I'm not sure when you have to uh, switch uh, from holding. Uh, or how to get quickly into the pool. Okay, so I need to be more upside down there for the bounce. Got it. I can tell you guys, when a map is weird, it's weird for literally everyone. Literally everyone is trying to figure it out. So I'm not scared that I haven't uh, quite understood it yet, because this will be the case for every single player. Oh yeah, so look, here I have more speed, because I, I did the turnaround better. Here, I don't know if that was good. It seems it certainly wasn't bad. Steered way too sharp there, noted. Okay, I got the risky finish, and we're second. That has to be us in. We have to be in Division 1 now. 46.2, first place, let's go. I finished a qualifier in 14th place, with a personal best of 45.90. I was 4 tenths of a second behind the winning time, but I was able to drive the map very consistently, so I felt confident going into the knockout match. The way the knockout match works is that all players start driving at the same time, racing to the finish line. The slowest players are eliminated each round, until it's down to just two players in a one versus one match for the trophy. In such a format, consistency is the most important thing. 
The only round you need to win is the last one. And apart from that, you just have to make sure that you aren't in last. Therefore, it's usually best to play safe and try to avoid crashing. So that was my strategy. Let's not hit the rocks. I'll just take a bit of a slower start to avoid the rocks. This map is gonna have mistakes. Oh boy, there's gonna be a lot of mistakes. This is not a map people are consistent on, I promise you. First round, you can probably make 15 seconds of mistakes in the end, which means consistency is the best play. Whew. PB in the first round. Should work. And another PB. I'm feeling this one. I'm really feeling this one. Okay, let's go. Oh god. Whew. Had to release my backward speed slide there. Great speed. Bit late for this cycle though. Oh god, yeah. This is why you gotta drive fast on this map. <laughs> if you get a bad cycle there, this was not even the worst cycle you could probably get, but I was not prepared for that. Oi, yeah. What a nice time there. 45-13 by Monkey. Gotta hit the end. Yeah, no, I need to uh, work on these uh, these starts especially. Oh, wow. This is such a couple of day classic. Monkey goes from driving the fastest time previous round to being out this time. It, it's not just him, it happens so much more than you'd think. People uh, get a bit too fancy, and you make one mistake and you're, you're just out. Although you're fast. Good speed here. Fifth. I'm, I feel, I, I still feel like I'm lacking a little bit of pace. I still feel I'm lacking a tiny bit of pace. After the first rounds, I could tell that there were some really fast, consistent players that were winning every time, and I felt like I couldn't match their pace. But that was because I was driving the map slightly wrong. About halfway through the tournament, my Twitch chat informed me that I was losing time in the middle by hitting the pool border too high, and that other players were instead hitting it deeper in the water to carry more speed. I knew that if I was going to win the tournament, I had to experiment and discover where I was losing time. So I decided to put all my trust and faith in chat and try it out. Release earlier? Yeah, I'm releasing to go down. Maybe I should just release more. It just feels counterintuitive to release very hard. I'll try. Oh, you guys are right. Oh, that was really good. Chat is smart. PB! And yeah, safe to say that was the missing piece. And after changing my strategy, I was getting personal best after personal best. It felt like the win was almost in my hands now. I was the fastest remaining player and I just had to stay consistent. You see, there's a bit of a meme in my live streams that pulling a virtual means to choke or fail from a promising position. But I'm more of the opinion that it means to clutch and perform under pressure. Me and my viewers go back and forth about this all the time. And finally, I was in a position where I could prove everyone else wrong. I just had to pull a virtual and clutch it. Oh wow, that was so uh, fast in the end. Really good end. Top 10, top 10, top 10. I will not lie, I'm getting a little nervous. A little nervous. What the hell? Okay. Jesus Christ. That was fast. Top 8. A DNF. We're safe. The guy uh, retired, so we can just chill to the finish. We are guaranteed uh, through this round. <laughs> okay, let's aim a bit higher. 
Who do you think is going to win? I have my money Masabi, on. Wasabi, Wasabi. No, he's going to go out. I I'm going to say Bord is going to win. I'll say Buffett. Top 4, Nexotic out. Well, my opinion, virtual gain. Il y a tellement une pace plus rapide que les autres. En plus, les deux autres full safe. Oh, mais la strat de Bird était plus rapide que virtuelle là, sous ce coup-là. Top 3 versus Safe Meister Marius and Bird. Oh my god, we're going to top two. Final. Final versus Marius89. Good luck, Marius. Let's go. <laughs> I know I have to risk. <sighs> Come on. Come on, one more. Oh, good start for the Marius Maestro. Oh, but he's going wide. Needs to get the releases correct, but he releases wrong. Now he needs to do the good drift. You're completely new. Oh, Marius yeah, with way more like, speed. Dude, Spam is doing his first casting round in ages. Just Look at that. Look yeah. at that. Never plus rapid. No, 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 no. Pas le safe master qui gagne. Oh, virtual with a sick landing. Coming back. It's not GG. It's maybe. Oh let's my god, go, let's virtual. go. Let's go, boys. <laughs> Another cup for the day win, my second time winning the tournament oh, by 500. I was so scared. I was so scared because I had such a bad start. Oh my god, it happened. <laughs> that last round was a true nail biter, and big respect to Marius89 for putting up such a close fight. We had pretty much a dead even start, but I lost a little bit of time in the middle water bounce. But thanks to a better approach in the last wall hit, I managed to build up much more speed. And it was just enough to regain the lead before the finish line. It took over half a year for me to win my second cup of the day. And it may be a while until the next time. So for now, I am just going to enjoy this feeling while it lasts. If you want to watch me play cup of the day live, I stream them every time I play on my Twitch channel. The link will be in the description. Anyways guys, that's it for now, I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you guys again soon with more Trekmania content. Until then, have a good one.